Well, hello guys. So today, a video on this Philips VCR that I just got at the thrift store at Value Village. It is a Philips Rebadge Panasonic, and uh, I well, I thought that I would uh, review it uh, like uh, at the same time as when I reviewed uh, uh, th this VCR that I just reviewed. But uh, well, uh, I thought the video would be too long, so I decided to review the, this this Philips VCR and also compare it with this Panasonic uh, uh, in an other video. Well, this is going to be a like a part two video because uh, uh, in the video that I filmed just yesterday before uh, I went to sleep, I've showed this video and talked about it. And so, uh, well, right now, I'm going to show you the back of the VCR. So there you have the video input and output. You have left left and right because it's a stereo VCR. And here there's like a jack that uh, it says camera remote, so I don't know exactly what this does, but uh, maybe this is like this is like for uh, using the VCR with a, a camera. And here it's on the back side, picture sharpness. So this is kind of stupid that they put this, this adjustment uh, on the back of the VCR. Uh, usually on old VCR they put it on the front of the VCR. And uh, here the sticker. So it says the model number here and uh, the manufacturing date. Most uh, Panasonic VCRs uh, say there is a sticker that says the date on the back, and uh, this one does. It was built in 1985. You can see it here. So it's a very old VCR, it's almost 34 years old. And uh, well, I, I looked at it and I thought it was built in 1986, but it's actually 1985. So uh, this was a pretty good VCR in 1985, it's a stereo, which was uh, not that common in 1985. Mo most people did not have a stereo VCR because they were they were more expensive. And this one is stereo, but not hi-fi. Hi-fi did exist in 1985, but this one is not. And here there's like an original sticker. The model number is also written there. And there there are uh, writings in uh, French and English. And here, like on most 80s VCR, you have a, like a, this door here, and there are uh, the controls for the, the the channel. I've never really used it because uh, it works for the the TV in the 80s, but now uh, there is no more analog TV, so you can't use this anymore. And here, behind this door, here you can select the audio, and here for uh, programming the clock and the the timer recording there's an input select Dolby noise reduction so this was a function that you could have uh, like a to uh, like get, it makes the audio better somewhat and uh, here you have a uh, plugs to uh, like a airphone uh, plug and it it's adjustable so this was a pretty nice function if you uh, want to if you wanted to uh, plug earphones when a uh, uh, listening to a, a tape and here you have a mic so you could plug a mic and record them with this so pretty interesting now I'm going to turn on the TV the TV is already plugged to it and uh, I've, I've already tested the VCR and uh, when I was at the thrift store uh, the first time I pressed play like it did not load all the way and it unloaded but uh, it did not do it uh, again after and uh, now this VCR seems to be fully working, so I'm going to insert Back to the Future, which is a movie that was uh, produced in the same year as this VCR, 1985. It doesn't go on play automatically, even if there is a movie tape with no time. And uh, well, the picture quality is working just fine. So this VCR is fully working, which is uh, pretty awesome for a VCR built uh, almost 24 years ago. I don't know if it has been repaired, but uh, if not, well, that means the belts that are in there are still uh, like very good. 
there's uh, two belts uh, in this and also the pinch water is still good so yeah there, there's two belts and uh, it uses an Adler gear which was uh, pretty uncommon for 1985 and well it can play times two the picture is not really good in that mode but uh, because it's probably just a two head VCR but stereo So yeah, pretty neat looking VCR, that's mostly yeah, why I bought it. So now I'm going to open it. So now I just opened the VCR and uh, well, I did not expect to uh, see something like that. And also uh, I really thought it was an Adler gear, but it's actually a tire. Pretty strange, it has the same exact mechanism with the same carriage as my other Panasonic. But my Panasonic has a, an Adler gear. And this one uses a tire, but apparently it's uh, still in good condition because uh, the VCR is uh, fully working. Well, uh, there's a circuit board here covering the, the mechanism. I did not uh, think that it would be there. The construction is very different from the, the other Panasonic and uh, I did not expect that it will be like this, that uh, it will have a, a circuit board like this there and uh, that kind of uh, circuitry. So it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, circuitry here, so maybe this is uh, for uh, producing the stereo sound, it, uh, maybe it took uh, that much uh, circuits. But uh, well, it's uh, quite different from the Panasonic. And uh, here uh, there's a blue tape guide and the other one is white. Oh, you have to power it on first. So pretty cool. And uh, well, uh, I forgot to show you this, but uh, here you have knobs for the, the slow tracking and the tracking, like you have on most 80s VCRs. And uh, you have uh, the speed selector, SPLP and SLP. So the recording speed. So now I'm going to insert the tape and uh, rewind it. So you will see that uh, this tire, even if it uses a tire, it is uh, still good. As you can see, it rewinded to the beginning with no problem. And uh, well, uh, for 1985, I expected to see uh, like a different carriage mechanism. So uh, I know that there are VCRs, there exist VCRs that have a, a motor placed uh, like there, but it has a it uses a belt. The VCR from 2001 has a Panasonic VCR from the mid 80s, and it has a, the motor placed uh, like this, but it drives a belt, a belt mechanism. So I thought the VCR in 1985 would. Uh, uh, have the, that mechanism, but uh, this one has the same as my other Panasonic and it has uh, this motor that's driving, uh, it does not drive a belt, it drives a shaft that goes uh, uh, here and it drives the warm gear and this uh, drives the carriage mechanism, you can't really see because it's pretty much hidden but uh, that's uh, how it works so it's a pretty interesting uh, cassette carriage mechanism so uh, right now I will just uh, raise up this uh, this circuit board if I can, so uh, you can see the the mechanism. Now I have uh, unscrewed the circuit board, and uh, well I can raise it up with my hand so I can uh, see the mechanism, but it, it does not stay there. It's, yeah, I have to hold it. So I'll have to insert the tape and uh, push the buttons with my foot.
So right now I think I'm going to uh, show you the bottom side of this VCR. So here's the bottom side of the VCR. And uh, again I'm pretty surprised to see this. The first thing I saw is that this pulley uh, it is smaller than the one in my Panasonic here. Like when I, when I, when I was at the thrift store I heard the tape, uh, the noise it did when the tape entered. And uh, I heard that it had the same cassette carriage as this Panasonic. But uh, uh, before I used to think that uh, all VCRs that have this cassette carriage, the same as this one and this one, will have a big pulley here. Like, just like my, my, my Panasonic. Like uh, my Panasonic uh, has a bigger pulley here and this gear uh, is not there. So this is this looks uh, more like my Pan my Magnavox top loading VCR made made by Panasonic, and also uh, the Gold Star VCR uh, has a similar mechanism to this. The Gold Star VCR that uh, the VCR King gave me. So yeah, I did not know uh, that a VCR with this carriage could have uh, this mechanism, this version with the the smaller pulley, like that does not have the big pulley. So yeah, the bottom side of this looks a lot like my the the top loader that's here. So Panasonic made top loaders with uh, this mechanism, and then th when they when they started making the front loading unit, uh, they added an extra motor for a cassette carriage. And uh, so this is a uh, I really like this mechanism, this bottom side. So right now I'm going to insert the tape and press play. So it's in this nice. Uh, I really like this part here. Now it's on fast forward, and the belt is uh, still good. Really cool. This is one of my favorite mechanisms. At least the bottom side is very interesting. So now I think I'm going to compare this VCR with the Panasonic. And well, there's my cat. It's here. That's the family cat. Well, right now I have the two VCRs in front of me, and I've put the Panasonic there. My Panasonic VCR from the year 1988. So these two VCRs uh, have the same mechanism, or almost, but uh, they are uh, three years of uh, difference. This from 1985 and this one 88. So you can see the difference in the the two Panasonic VCRs uh, from uh, 85 and 88. So I think most Panasonic VCRs uh, built in 1987-88 uh, uh, were like that. Like with the circuit board placed like this and uh, all that. And in 1989 I think they started using the the, the G-Deck because uh, this VCR here, it has the G-mechanism and it has it is from uh, 1989, Hi-Fi VCR, that one. So you can see that the, con the construction of the VCRs is a, a lot different. Here, the like no uh, none of the circuit boards are the are the same and are uh, placed at the the same place. So uh, here there is a circuit board that covers just a uh, half of the the top, but uh, you can see the tape guys loading too. And here, well, you can see uh, them by here. So uh, well, there is a hole there, so you can you can access the this head uh, when the circuit board is in place. And uh, here, uh, well, uh, on this circuit board, 
there is a hole here so that when the, this circuit board is in place you can adjust the tape guide because when the tape guide is loaded it's just under this hole and you can uh, put your screwdriver and uh, adjust the tape alignment uh, in this hole and uh, well you can see the the cassette carriage is the same the, like the shape of the metal is uh, uh, slightly different so you see here it has the this that thing to hold the wires but uh, uh, and here it is not present the motors at the same place so here you can see that the motor is a kind of a golden color and here the motor is a silver color so uh, older VCR from the mid 80s uh, mostly had uh, motors like this uh, like come okay, kind of golden color so this one it has an idle tire, which I didn't know. When I bought it, I thought it will have a, a gear. Like, just like this. You see, this one has a gear. And uh, well, right now, I will insert the, the tape. The Back to the Future tape in the Panasonic. So this VCR is fully working, I did not uh, have to do anything, it has been repaired, there's a sticker from uh, like a repair, uh, repair shop. Very nice, very smooth loading and uh, also I like the cassette carriage mechanism on this one. The cassette carriage mechanism sounds uh, almost the same. Rewind is working with no problem. And uh, well, the display of the VCRs are pretty similar. But uh, this one, uh, like the, dis the display is a bit uh, bigger and uh, here it displays the count and the clock at the same time. Uh, well, this one it uh, displays either the clock or the counter. You can see here the counter. You can reset it. And you can change it. This one has a door here. And uh, it does not have a knob, it has a, a button for the adjusting the, the tracking while this one has a knob. And also it doesn't have a switch for the, the tape speed. It has a button that when you press it, it changes the, the tape recording speed. So pretty interesting. You could see that you can see the like the evolution of the the VCR that Panasonic made in the mid and late eighties. So the display is very similar to the one I, of uh, my Magnavox top loader. So uh, the, this top loader that is here is from 1984 and uh, I think in the uh, year 1984 Panasonic made the uh, top loaders and uh, front loaders. I don't know if the front loaders were like uh, more expensive than the top loader ones but probably it was, they were. Like uh, the, the Panasonic in 1984 they made the uh, VCRs, uh, front loading VCRs that uh, are like, like they are exactly like this top loader but they have an extra motor and that motor is the version of, like uh, that have a, a belt. But this one is like a between this one and this one. Like it has a mechanism more similar to this one. But it has a, the cassette carriage like this one. So they they made, Panasonic made a, a multiple versions of this mechanism.
Oh, if even if the Adler tire is a, it is a track, well, uh, it it uh, remains with full power uh, anyway. So it's uh, not, it does not need to be replaced, and the pinch roller is neither because uh, well, it's working well. So you will probably be able to see it. The low tire, it is cracked, but it uh, is it still works uh, well. So now of the back side of the VCRs, you can see the, the Panasonic, the sticker. So the two uh, the stickers are similar, like uh, Panasonic, as I said, they, uh, they mostly show the date on their VCRs here. And this one does it too, uh, it, it shows it. So the date 19, uh, 1988, the model number PV3721K. So uh, pretty much all Panasonic VCRs uh, sold in Canada had uh, the letter K added. And uh, well, the video input and output are pretty much the same. Only this one is mo a mono VCR. And uh, well, uh, it has the, this switch too, this one. And uh, well, the picture sharpness, this VCR does not have the, the setting and it does not have a, uh, any uh, thing like that on the back. And uh, so that's pretty much it for my VCR review. I hope you enjoyed it and you can uh, uh, leave a like if you liked the video. So uh, I'll see you bye for the next video. Maybe the next time I get a VCR, but uh, it does not happen very often. So bye.